have Sarah Webb, Martina Devlin, and Seamus Hosey here to talk to us. Um, you're all extremely welcome to Listo 2014. Um, Sarah, you're part of the National Children's Festival and you're reading tomorrow and you're doing a workshop and then on Saturday you're skipping. That's right. Yeah, so maybe if you'd like to maybe just give us a brief kind of overview of your I'm plan. not skipping, personally. That's right. Well, that's you're a shame. Getting the challenge. You're skipping the event, right? <laughs> no, no, no. Don't be giving them heart help. <laughs> no, uh, tomorrow morning I am speaking to students um, I think fifth and sixth class about uh, writing, uh, how I became a writer, um, motivation, inspiration, that kind of thing. And we'll, I'll be dressing them up in wigs and we're going to act out a little piece from one of my Ask Amy Green books. So that, they love putting the wigs on. It takes quite a while for the girls to get the wigs on, so that'll be a <laughs> bit of fun. And then I'm doing a writing workshop in the afternoon. And then on Saturday, you're right, it's skipping playground rhymes and we're going to do. Um, I, don't, I can't remember what it's called. Do you know when you put the elastics around your um, oh, ankles yes, and you go you England, play, Ireland, yeah. Scotland, Wales, inside, outside, on the scales. Mm. So basically playground drawings. Yeah. It's wonderful that, you know, I suppose there is a, a sense in the Children's Festival that, you know, that reading is extremely important, but also mm. making stories outside and, yeah. you know, using the outside to be part of the narrative of childhood, yeah. for want of a better expression. I suppose it's all about telling stories mm. and different ways of, of telling stories. And I think Irish children and Irish people are natural storytellers. So if you get them, you know, playing and play, I find is, is a big part of writing mm. and, and really in every kind of creative mm. act. And um, I like getting them to play and then to talk about what they're doing. Mm. Yeah. That's so lovely. Hopefully it'll be good fun. I'm sure it will. And Martina, you're giving a workshop as well during Writers Week, part of the long tradition of Writers Week, um, providing workshops for budding writers. Um, and, and do you find it more difficult maybe with the writers that you um, work with maybe to get them to play a little bit more? Are they, are they extremely willing? I'm not trying to get them to yes. play. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't know I was supposed to do it. Martina, I told you have to get them to play. Okay. Well, <laughs> and skipping. Okay, I'm just like making them right. So, so, um, what I notice about it is that there's a great yearning in people to uh, tell a story. Um, uh, it, it seems to transect the Irish race, the urge to... Well, we're, we're natural storytellers anyway, as Sarah's saying, from a young age. But then the urge not to just do it verbally, but to push it down on paper. To uh, it's almost as though it legitimises it um, to have it in writing. And uh, I'm fascinated by some of the stories I'm hearing already. There's a great sense of local history and place, not just in Listow, although it's evident here, but around the country. So I've been talking to my class about dialect and about language and about place. Sometimes the more specific you are, the well, more it resonates. The universality of it, absolutely. And funnily enough, uh, Paul Lynch was talking about that today. I did a public interview with Paul Lynch and um, and uh, Emer McBride, um, which had a great attendance. They were turning people away, which <laughs> is a good sign. And uh, Paul talked about how um, he uses Donegal as a setting and the sense of place, the timelessness of the landscape and the transience of people passing through it. Um, and it, it, you know, big empty skies and, and in fact the, the way that although now we pass through these beautiful landscapes very quickly in cars, people would have been walking through them much more slowly and, and much more dwarfed by the natural environment then. Do you think then that writers have an obligation in a sense to almost stop the car? I think what's interesting is it's not just the beautiful coastal areas and rural areas and mountainous areas of Ireland. I mean, you can see beauty in the middle of the city, just a little flower pushing through the cracks and the pavement. I think one of the things that comes out of the workshops and just being in Ristol is that it gives people the confidence and the reassurance to explore their own psychic backyard, mm -hmm. their own inner landscape. And uh, only last week I came across a little poem that uh, a monk wrote in the 8th century in Ireland, and it was translated by Frank O'Connor.
And in a little poem, this monk said, what I think has more general application to writers and workshops, he said, to go to Rome is little profit, endless pain. The master that you seek in Rome, you find at home or seek in vain. <laughs> Very wise. And I just thought that it's something that I have experienced in workshops, a sense that, you know, my own story, my scale fame, uh, uh, if I can't work with that, uh, for starters, it shouldn't be the boundaries of my horizon, but maybe it should be the jumping off point. And I don't know whether you as writers would agree. Oh, 100%. I was talking about that only this morning in my um, workshop. We were talking about where ideas come from. And because I'm working with people who not who are at the beginning of um, the writing process, or early on, um, we're talking about how, where, where would you get your inspiration from? And I'm saying, look at your family, look at your own, <laughs> you look at your own childhood, look at your parents' back, uh, background, find any elderly person you can, pin them <laughs> into a corner and ask for details about their life. Um, because often in history books and in textbooks, the little details that shine a light on how people lived and what their aspirations were aren't coming through. You're getting the wars and the pieces and things like that. But but how people lived and, and how they made do and, and um, just the way they went about their business, it's fascinating. And uh, you know, the oral history is a terrific way to get all of that, yeah. isn't it? Um, I, I love hearing the Shana Key stories. But I mean, we're all basically. I don't think any person should really put writer as an occupation. I think we should all just put Chana Key down. Yeah. Because it's what it is. And, and of course Listola has a really rich um, history in, in Shana Key storytelling. And, and would you have seen that during you know the 40 years that you've been involved, Seamus? Well, I first came to the Stowe Writers Week in, my God, it sounds like another century. It was <laughs> 1975. <laughs> and, uh, what was happening in 1975? Well, the Stowe uh, Writers Week was very small. Um, Brendan Canelli was giving a writer's workshop on writing poetry and there were about maybe eight or nine of us in it and we sat, if not literally, metaphorically, at Brendan's feet because <laughs> Brendan was such a charismatic character. Um, but um, it, was, it was very small and there was only a small fraction of the events, of course, of, as it progressed. But constant over the years, and I've come here in different guises, making radio programs and being involved in giving workshops and, you know, this year launching a couple of books and so on. But the constant has been the openness of the people uh, in the workshops to each other, the accessibility of the guest speakers, uh, the poets, the novelists, the playwrights. Probably the best way to describe it was maybe seven or eight years ago when Seamus Heaney, God rest him, opened the festival and, and about two o'clock in the morning I looked into the bar of the Stowe Arms and he was sitting at the end of the bar reading a handwritten manuscript from an old battered copy book which a man I'd say in his fifties was eagerly awaiting commentary on and like that's what it's about um, I mean, well, he was a particularly generous man he was he was but most people i think are john b keen used to say that the soul was a town where it was easier to write than not to write <laughs> and that nobody would ever be ashamed to write the word author or writer on their passport i love doing creative writing workshops with children because they don't have the sense of fear that adults do. Yeah. They are just, they, you know, you'll say to them, let's come up with some ideas and they'll start firing at you like with aliens with uh, cardboard boxes for feet and, you know, yeah. they're just brilliant. Sarah and I both live in uh, Dublin, quite close to each other. And um, so if you're at a festival in 
that area, you're going to go home to your own house after yeah. it, mm -hmm. yeah. and you're not going to engage. Yeah. You know, you're yeah. going to do your event. You'll, you'll stay around for a little while, but yeah. you'll come home and you know you yeah. have a cup of tea. It's or very immersive here. Yeah, yeah but so here right. you're staying over. There's nothing else you can do, and mm -hmm. so or we want to. Well, it's okay. Right. Yeah, yeah, I know. It's, so like, it's you, almost you like going enjoy it. to summer camp or something. You yeah. know that idea that of our Irish college or something. Yes. And in a sense, you all bond together, and then everyone is crying on Sunday. Mm. You know, at the healing yeah. when you have to. But go then home there are it. several stalls. I know people who come for the lunchtime and evening drama, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. or people who come for and they go on the bus tours or the walks mm -hmm. or the out into the bog and uh, the exhibitions. And you know, and some people manage to combine uh, permutations and combinations of all of these events. So with spreadsheets. Yeah, <laughs> yes, absolutely. And pie yeah. charts. Yes. <laughs> I know. And, 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 uh, you know, I know, yes, I, yes, I know two or three people who come to the stall every year and they don't do days, they do only nights, I like you know. I like that. Uh, vampires. Uh, <laughs> you know, I'll, I'll, tell you, I'll tell you after, yeah. But, uh, 